Well, this is a follow on about our heat pump that we've had installed. And I wanted to just run through some of the figures that helped me make an informed decision. Um, it really was a data driven decision. And so here's a few of the resources that I used. Um, first of all, I split out the rooms that had the radiators in with the existing type of radiator and the output that they were capable of at the uh, DT, at the Delta T. Um, and so you can see here the um, proposed new height of the radiator and the depth as well. So I've, I've uh, minimized some columns or removed some columns here now it was I, I did try to make it a little bit more compact at one point and um, you can see the various uh, flow temperature and delta t that will produce a certain amount of uh, wattage it, the heat output at various temperatures along the top so if we take for example the living room it was a 1400 wide standard 600 mil high and it was a type 11 so that's a single panel with a single convector and the original output would have been uh, 1321 so I knew if I'd have gone to a 700 mil high uh, type 21 double panel with a single convector I knew that um, to get the similar output I could run it as low as the delta T of 35 degrees so um, uh, I did a little bit of research on some of the costs as well radiators are surprisingly cheap and very easy for you to replace yourself if you're so inclined so um, anyway total uh, wattage there I calculated that the existing output of the existing radiator system was around about seven kilowatts um, which was uh, an interesting figure to come to um, that didn't at the time uh, include the conservatory I was doing these calculations even before we'd insulated the roof there so I used a little package online called heat punk um, I don't know how much of this I'm gonna get within the uh, screenshot here this is the basic floor plan that you can really quickly easily input anyone who can use a computer can quickly make one of these with some measurements if you know the build up of your walls and your ceilings and um, ha have any other technical data for your windows I mean this is still quite a rough calculation but this is essentially building your own heat loss calculation um, I did this one myself and then uh, you can also see along here it will give you performance outputs it gives you a heck of a lot of data oh, this isn't actually I haven't um, got I'm not screenshotting enough of the screen to show you all of the, the data um, but I really recommend this uh, heat punk I think it is owned by Midsummer Wholesale and um, the uh, products that I actually recommended were the products that I went with in the end. It was interesting to me that uh, in total there were three heat loss calculations that were conducted here. Two professionals did them and um, I did my own. And uh, you can also jump, there you go, first floor. Um, Put in all the windows, radiators, etc. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Um, the discrepancy was only about 5%. So um, between um, my calculation and the professionals, there was only about 5% in it. So anyway, if I jump back onto this uh, sheet, one of the uh, calculations that I was um, going on was the gas usage for the previous year, the annual annual usage, was 14,000 kilowatt hours. Now, um, I have assumed a an efficiency of 0 0.6, of 60% efficiency on our existing non-condensing gas boiler. Now, um, if, when it was brand new, it was stated at 70% efficiency. Some people um, have speculated that these older boilers, when the gas valve gets a bit sticky and a bit old, the efficiency could be as low as 
We did actually then go on to find out that when they ripped out the gas boiler, the gas valve was a bit sticky, and um, the gas engineer, when he did his um, pressure loss test, he found that there was somewhere between 10 to 20 millibar of gas pressure that was just constantly flowing out of our boiler, um, straight out of the flue, and just complete wasted energy. So if we if we roughly calculate that. Um, this is 60% efficient, then we're generating 8,400 kilowatt hours of heat. Um, the current price of gas for me is 7.25 pence per um, kilowatt hour, the, which brings our annual cost to 1,015. And you can see the um, how this is being calculated at the top. So I could, for example, pop in the 70%, let's be really optimistic, and you can see that the we're generating more heat. Ultimately, the cost is the same for 14,000 kilowatt hours, of course, but the efficiency is changing how many kilowatt hours we've got here. Next now is this is my comparison to a heat pump. How efficient does the heat pump need to be before we're breaking even or we are turning a profit on it. So if we if we go with the assumption that the previous boiler was 70% efficient, we were generating 9,800 kilowatt hours of heat. Um, you'll see here that the break even point is a scop of 2.8. And at that point, there is cost parity between gas and a heat pump in my situation with a 70% efficient boiler. If, for example, we can then uh, run, I had to actually extend this. I originally had only done it to a scop of four, but my system's performing better than that. So I'm looking at the financial costs. If, for example, though, we get a scop of four over our annual uh, bill, we'll be saving 304 pounds and 50 pence. If we then go back and say, hey, the efficiency is only 60%, then the break-even point is a scop of 2.4. Um, you can see also in here the cost per kilowatt hour for gas is 29 pence. I think it's 28.8 pence for me. So, um, right, uh, where do we want to go next? Uh, so this brings me on to where... what how is our heat pump performing at the moment our heating the last time i checked was performing a cop of 4.3 which would save us 448 pounds in a year but the hot water side of it was uh was uh performing at a cop of 3.2 so on the hot water side which is typically about 25 percent of our consumption is a saving of 253 pounds so i'd have to um i'd have to put i could put a couple of more um put a couple more calculations in here to work out the overall combination of the hot water at 3.2 as well as the heating space heating at 4.3 um anyway um that's at 60 percent efficiency if we were really um if we were really critical, we looked at the efficiency of 50%, then we can see that you are breaking even at a COP of just two. Um, and at the COP of 4.3, you then start to say five, 542 pounds. So there are potential, there's potential for great savings to be made. Um, this is a quick little basic sheet. Um, this is how I uh, came to a decision based on so, some of the available data to me, um, some of the things that I could already measure, uh, such as the radiator size in, uh, perform a heat loss calculation, and then I want to jump over to another sheet, which is our actual real world measured performance. So up here on the left, you've got the dates. Um, this is the actual consumption, what we've actually used here in gas, and the cost based on multiplying that by the 7.25% uh, 7.25 pence 
um, per kilowatt hour. Um, then if I go further down, oh, look, degree days, um, have a little look at degree days. You can look up your local area and you can um, basically work out what the average temperature was for that 24 hour period, which can help you to make some comparisons. Um, further down here, so we've got a little gap uh, between the gas being cut off and the heat pump being commissioned. And then down here, I've got some figures of um, the consumption of the heat pump. Um, this one's for heating, this one's for hot water, this is the total consumption for the heat pump. And this is then the cost once we've multiplied it by the uh, 20 oh I've got 28.5 pence per kilowatt hour there I thought it was 28.8 but I would have looked it up so um, over here we've got some of the degree days so we can make some direct comparisons for example uh, average temperature 8.7 in pounds and pence it cost us two pounds 70 on electric with the heat pump just yesterday the 21st of November if I then find an equivalent day on gas it was costing us 3.6 well 3 3 pounds 70 pence so we've gone 2 pounds 70 to 3 pounds 70 so it, 1 pound per day potentially which does start to verify some of the um some of the potential cost savings of 3 to 400 pounds per year we start to get in that ballpark figure. Let's have a little look here at something a little bit colder. Have we got 6.2? What have we got up here? What's the colder? 6.5, which in gas cost us £4.20. Oh, I've got 6.5 here. £3.25. So again, saving about a pound uh, per day. These first few days, we were trying to figure out the controls and trying to help it run um, as efficiently as possible. So hopefully we smooth that out a little bit and we've dialed in the weather compensation curve. Anyway, I'm rambling on. This is just a quick video about some of the data that has driven the decisions and some of the data that we've collected so far. Um, I hope that's helpful to you. A lot of the argument around heat pumps, um, there seems to be a great myth that they're noisy, which is definitely not the case, at least it's hard for me to say definitively what it's going to sound like in 10 years, 15, 20 years when maybe fan bearings are a bit more worn out. But on a brand new unit right now, it is absolutely whisper quiet. You you just cannot hear it. Um, some of the other concerns are it won't heat your home and your home won't be sufficiently warm. As you can see from the degree days we've had so far, um, we've had a couple of cold days there, 6.2, 6.5. But I'm here on the south coast, the warmest part of the UK. Um, it never really gets that cold. But I can tell you right now that the heat pump will heat our home just as warm as the gas boiler did, if not warmer because of all of the radiator upgrades and the more even heat throughout the house. And um, the other myth is that it's going to cost a fortune to run. So far, that's not true. But uh, I will be keeping a log of this and if you want to see more of it then just drop me a comment and I'll um I'll keep updating it throughout the winter and especially once we've once we come into March April we'll have a much clearer picture of how we fared um with uh, comparative days uh, with the gas boiler I hope this is helpful anyway I've still got some plans to um show you a little bit more of how we went about choosing an installer, how we um, informed ourselves a little bit more. Um, I, I think the barrier to entry for heat pumps is still a bit high and a bit difficult. Um, I have a background with uh, a good understanding of technical systems and uh, I understand uh, as well running small businesses so I have a attention to detail and um, really put in a lot of hours to do a lot of research and to make an informed decision but I think for your average 
Joe, um, who may not be so technically minded and may not have the attention to detail. I think a lot of the the a lot of the uh, information surrounding heat pumps is a bit baffling. Um, and I don't know how that can be cracked and how for the for the regular public you can uh, make that a little bit easier to understand and to swallow. But um, one thing that I have noticed as I guess we have to start considering ourselves as early adopters now, um, we're the only ones in the street or in the neighborhood that have a heat pump and already people are asking about it and how it's performing and people are quite intrigued because they've just read a lot of negative media and so hopefully we can dispel a little bit of that locally person to person but hopefully a few of these videos online can also help that situation anyway i've got to stop rambling that's enough from me see you next time bye